Hey guys, I'm Hal. I wanted to do a short and to the point video on how to use the display sequencer to come up with a strobing light effect like what I what you see here in uh, in Planet Coaster. So I'm going to get out of the way so you can see everything that I'm doing on the screen. The first thing that you need to remember is that once you've laid out your lights in the pattern that you want for your building is you click on the display sequencer itself right once you're in the building and you're editing the building then you click on the display sequencer and the display sequencer will give you this box you click on edit trigger sequence and I've got one here that's got nothing in it just for an uh, example purposes we're going to get rid of that really quick this is the one that i created for the lights that's causing them to strobe as you see them okay when you create one of these the first important thing that you want to remember is if you select all of your lights like this at once it will put them in a random order and when you're trying to work with them that's going to be difficult to work with um, you want them to go in the order that you're going to have them strobe, ideally. So you don't want to select them like that. You want to select them in the order in which you want them to appear on the list. So you go to Connect Objects to Group, and it gives you the selection tool. If you hold down Control and just drag a box over each one in the order that you want, like that, it'll put them on the list in the order that you want them. That's the first important thing to remember. And once you've created your display group, you are going to wind up with something that looks like this. It's got each of the color bowl area lights in it. And you can see them highlighted on the screen there as I drag the mouse over them on the list. And they are being highlighted in the order that they are on the list, which is also the order we want them to turn on. And then the second important thing that you have to remember when you're using the display sequencer is the timer here and what that signifies this timer at the top for the whole display group tells us when we want this group of lights to turn on well we want this group of lights to turn on immediately so we have that set to zero seconds and then the light each light inside the display group has a timer of its own well we want them to strobe so i've set them to 0.1 seconds for the first 0.2 for the second 0.3 for the third and so on um, you can vary that and vary your strobe however you would like. Um, I have found that this is uh, pretty smooth, and if you add more lights, it becomes even more smooth. Um, if you have too many lights in one area of the game, you can have graphical glitches. So uh, go crazy and see where the limit is um, for you on your system. But um, for me, you'll see uh, the ride that uh, I applied this technique to is about the maximum that I could handle for my system. Um, the third important thing that you have to remember when you're doing these is outside of the display sequencer itself. When you are, are editing the building, you select the lights themselves individually. They have a trigger duration. What that means is how long, when this light is triggered, how long is it going to stay on for? The default is three seconds. When you're strobing them like this, that's a very long time. Three seconds would, if I left it at the default, all of these lights would come on and stay on for three seconds. Um, so they would all come on um, one at a time and stay on. And then after three seconds, they would start to go off and then it would repeat. And we would lose our line of light that's traveling around the outside here. We would just have uh, the whole thing lit up um, so I've I've knocked it down to 0.6 seconds for each light and that allows us to have this line that's traveling around the outside like it does and you can vary that um, and and make that strobe fit exactly how you want it to be or make that line of light shorter or longer depending on how you vary that time um, and the last thing that you really need to know about doing this technique for strobe lights is to get it on the continuous activation. And that, you go back to the display sequencer 
it gives you this box again and you go to the top of the box here and you go to scheduler which is the second thing it looks like a gear the second tab and you can have this set to activate on a trigger if you like but what I've done here is I've changed this the default here is not continuous activation I don't remember what the default actually is but I've set it to continuous activation and that is why it's looped and continues to go again and again and again and that gives you the short and to the point how to use the display sequencer to do strobe lights and with that you can expand that concept to do all kinds of awesome things like this coaster scenery that I have designed around this coaster um, and there the possibilities are really infinite you could play with just this tool and the lights not to mention the fireworks and everything else that's triggerable um and and just come up with amazing amazing things um thanks for watching i am incredible hal you can call me hal you can watch me stream monday through friday on twitch at twitch.tv incredible hal i hope you have a great day